So I just finished a museum. I was there for about two hours. It was the wrong museum I was looking for. I was looking for the Museum of the Uprising, basically a museum that goes more in depth and detail about World War II and how the people here that were in the ghetto um, rose up against uh, the Germans. I think they did it once or twice, and that's what then caused the Germans to retaliate, pretty much flatten Warsaw. So that's the Uprising Museum. I went to the uh, Jewish History Museum of, uh, of them in Warsaw, which just starts off a long, long time ago. Um, you know, maybe you know, 15, 1400s or something, but it does touch on World War II on the end and going into the Cold War, which was great. But the craziest thing, I'm not joking, when I was downstairs, I get a text from my friend in the, my Air Force squadron, and he knew I was traveling. He's an avid traveler himself. His name's um, Alex Berezovsky originally from Ukraine, but he and I served together as the 701st Combat Operations Squadron. And he texts me and I told him I was traveling and he, I answered the text and he says, are you still in Europe or are you traveling? Are you still in Europe traveling or are you back in the US? And I text him back, I go, no, I'm in Warsaw, Poland. And I answered the text, next thing I know, he's standing right next to me <laughs> by one of the displays. He goes, man, I saw you walk by me and I thought, there's no way that's him. There's no way that's Vince, Vince Dino, but, um, yeah, yeah, a guy from my Air Force squadron. Um, that's the second guy from the Air Force, my Air Force. The other one was in Monaco. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm probably meet up with him later on tonight. He's here tonight. He leaves back for the States tomorrow. Um, I got one more full day here. But one thing I just wanted to point out is that this museum, this memorial, and this museum is, in essence, what had been the center of the Warsaw Ghetto. The Warsaw Ghetto. If you've seen the movie The Pianist, or the con true story, when the concert pianist was hiding out and in the Warsaw Ghetto. A lot of it has changed, a lot of it's modernized, but what I'm gonna hunt down now is a uh, memorial, and the, according to the map, it says there's a portion of the ghetto wall still up. So I'm gonna go check that out. Eight minute walk from here, hopefully I find it. Very few things I've seen here in uh, Warsaw have um, English or yeah, English writing to describe it. So as you see here, it's all in, it's all in Hebrew. But on the other side, it's described where I'm at. I think it's very important for me to read it. So I generally wouldn't, here's the perspective. I guess some people do copy off some pictures and brought them here, but I'll read it to you. Um, Grave of the fighters of the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising, built from the rubbles of Mill Street, Milla Street, one of the liveliest streets of the pre-war Jewish Warsaw. These ruins of the bunker at 18 Milla Street are the place of rest rest of the commanders and the fighters of the Jewish combat organization as well as some civilians among them lies um, I'm not gonna be able to pronounce these names there's some names here the commander-in-chief on May 8th 1943 surrounded on May 8th 1943 this commander-in-chief was surrounded by the Nazis after three weeks of struggle many perished or took their own lives uh, refusing to perish at the hands of their enemies. There were several hundred bunkers built into the ghetto, found and destroyed by the Nazis. They became graves. They could not save those who sought refuge um, inside them. Yet, they remain everlasting symbols of the Warsaw Jews. Jews will to live inside them. Yet, they remain everlasting symbols of the Warsaw um, the bunker in the Mill Street is the largest in the ghetto, is the place of rest of over a hundred fighters, only some of whom are known by name. Here are the rest. Here they rest, buried where they fell, to remind us and the whole earth, earth, to remind us that the whole earth is their grave. So um, I guess I'll try to sum it up. Apparently there was many bunkers. Uh, the Warsaw Uprising lasted three weeks. Um, some of them went down to their underground or what there would be would be bunkers. The Germans found them, and I guess just blew up the bunkers in place while they were still in there, which similar to what our World Trade Center incident would have been as the um, everything collapses, their bodies just get, you know, crushed and buried along with the rubble. So apparently this would be a, a grave site. Uh, and then there's something up, up, there's something up here. So this is where the remains are at, which is kind of indescript and a little bit on the sad side. So some names are here that were in the bunker. 
this stone makes it really hard to read through the camera. And then there's something up here too. Let me all get closer. The way this mound is built, kind of looks like it could have been part of the bunker itself. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to read this. No, it's, it's not in English at all. Some camels, but this has got to be um, remnants of there. All I can tell is that there's something that says 1943 on it. 1943 again up here. So that's a little little park in the middle of a community. Well, I am still in Warsaw, so this very well, you know, obviously I would have been in the Warsaw ghetto here in 1943. And I'm walking out now and I'm gonna walk down a little bit long, a little bit more to find that piece of wall that's hopefully still there. So I just left that bunker area and I'm coming across this sign and this is a memorial site. I'm not sure if this is the one I'm looking for, but this is a fence that was in the Jewish ghetto that kept them in. And here's, this is all historic, this fence line. And then look how it turns in, kind of like what you see in Birkenau, how it curves up, but that bob wire this metal and this bob wire was from World War II. This right here. So all this was all this was all put up during this was all put up by Nazis in World War II. All that. I highly doubt anyone came and restrung it with bob wire. And there's there's pictures of it. There's pictures of the people on the other side. But yeah, this it's a pretty long strand of it. This is weird to just be walking down a neighbor. I just, once again, I just happenstance, I just happened upon it, happenstance. I just happened upon it, and it goes pretty much through the whole city block. Let me go on the other side of the street. So it looks like it starts right around there. Wow. So if this was fence for the ghetto then when it curves inside is to keep people in so I'd be on the outside of the ghetto and it curves into what have been would have been the inside of the ghetto it's amazing that it's still here it really is uh, rusty look how rusty it is oh my goodness I just can't I can't for some reason I'm just having a hard time wrapping my head around that there were Jewish people on the other side of this that probably ended up dying in one way or another. This historic fence on Nishka Street was a witness to the history of the Warsaw Ghetto. It stood behind the building housing the SS headquarters since May 1942. The southern side of Nishka Street was incorporated into the ghetto in autumn of 1940. Photographs were taken through this fence during the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising suppressed by the SS troops under Jurgenstrup. Uh, they showed the buildings at former 23 and 25 Niska Street, which were destroyed during the uprising. The Jewish residents of these houses perished in the flames or committed suicide by jumping from the upper floors. Today, it is home to the Kristoff Kimilo uh, Middle School, number 37. Bullet marks dating back to World War II are still visible in the fence. I, 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 I don't know where, where that would have been. I don't know any bullet marks might be on this fence. I mean, it could be scrap. Well, these look like bullet marks. If you've ever been to a range and shot something, that looks like that could be a bullet mark. Some of these. I, I don't, I might be wrong, but um, I don't know made of. Well, if the Jews were on the other side, then the bullets would have been coming from this direction, coming from the German side. And I think this is the, what have been the SS headquarters. I think this is the middle school they're talking about. So you would have the SS headquarters on this plot of land, not that building. I don't think it's the same building, but that's the middle school now that it was talking about. And so headquarters there and the fence line here. This might be what I was looking for in the first place. I thought it was a wall, not a fence. But still just as in, empowering and, and, and moving. All right, I don't see anything else look like bullet marks, really. Um, I don't think that's the important thing. I think that it's important that this thing is still up here. 
interesting to be across from a middle, middle school where they can actually learn history and, and look across the street and see it. Okay, for reference, that barbed wire fence I was, I was in front of, it's not this graded one, it's the one on the other side. If you look center screen, you'll see the railing if you just look in the depth of it. So what I did is I walked down that street that was on the other side of this street, made a right-hand turn, crossed the street here, and I come across this memorial. I wish I, can, I wish I can pronounce this right. I'm not gonna try, I'm just gonna sound ridiculous. But I came across this memorial. I'm gonna back up so you guys could see it better. Oh man, there's nobody, hope nobody hits me. Cause they could put up another memorial. So there's this memorial and this would have been in the ghetto at this point. Cause I'm on the other side of the, what would have been the bob wire. It's really quiet around here, except for somebody's car alarm, little light traffic. But it says here, um, along this path of suffering and death, over 300,000 Jews were driven in from 1942 to 1943 from the Warsaw Ghetto to the gas chambers of the Nazi extermination camps. And then there's some names here. Um, I don't know if this was a dividing representation of a dividing wall like the Berlin Wall was, I don't know. And then there's this strip of information. This is really, really hard um, und undescript for me to, to understand the design. Um, the design, the contrast, but on the other side of the street, um, and then I was told, well, no, I wasn't told this. The map said there was a existing part of the wall here, but I think the map was just off. Those things are loud. But I'm gonna run across the street and see what this sign says. Okay, so this sign is on an, an opposing fence that is where I was before. There's the one with the, the rusty bob wire. It's over there past that park bench, and then that middle school is right behind it. So I'm trying to figure out what this one is now. It's kind of saying uh, similar information. During the Warsaw Ghetto period since 1941, there are surviving buildings visible in this photograph. Uh, today, 57 Stalky Street, formerly 21, uh, housed a shelter for Jewish refugees from other towns. Since the summer of 1942, it was home to the headquarters of the SS unit charged with overseeing deportations to Treblinka death camp and camps in Lublin district. Jews rounded up to be deported were collected in the road on the pavement of today's Stauke Street, where the Amundsplex loading area had been stocked out. Stocked out, staked out. Um, here, they be, here they waited to be loaded into trains. Some 300,000 Jews were deported from Warsaw. Most of them did not survive. All right, so I think this is showing us what would have been behind here, would have been behind, but that loading area, is, it was the memorial. This is the, this is the loading area as the sun goes down. Let me see if I can block it with some trees. So that area I was in before was the loading area where they loaded up the Jews after the Warsaw Uprising, who was ever left. That was a loading platform. And these tracks with the trolley drawn on very well may have been either the tracks or the track bed where those trains took them away. Okay, now, now that I take a closer look at this, this building here, look at the way the window dimensions are. And it looks like it's that building right there. I'm, I'm thinking that that's that building. Okay, this is all a bit confusing when going from the paper map to Google Maps to the signs on the streets. But there is 5-7. There's 5-7, which they said was a holding area where they were taking Jews out of the ghetto. And then in 42 or 43, they made it into the SS headquarters. So that's that structure. And then that memorial I was reading off of is over there describing 5-7. And then... Uh, the plaque and then the memorials across the street here where the loading area was so building 5-7 is right there 
the sign describing everything is right there. And this is the memorial to where they loaded is right here. So I'm gonna retrace my steps and go back to where that barbed wire was and figure out what the significance of that school was because according to all this layout, that was the SS headquarters right there after they were using it for a place to stage deporting the Jews. Okay, now I got it put together. Okay, so I'm back on the other side, the first one I saw. So this fence, which ironically curves the opposite direction. I thought that would be on the side, but why about the side of the Jewish ghetto? So I would be on the side of the Jewish ghetto and the building behind me, which is now a junior high school that I showed you earlier, where that footprint is, there were some apartments there that were totally destroyed during the Jewish, uh, the ghetto uprising, the Jewish uprising. And this is showing this fence line, which is right here in real life. It's showing this fence line, it's showing the building as it was behind it. And this bottom picture, you know, shows it getting destroyed. So the building you see in this picture is no longer standing. It's, on, it's in the Jewish ghetto. And I would be standing in the Jewish ghetto. Why those curve in or away from it? I don't know, that, that, that design doesn't seem right. You'd think that the prisoners would be on the other side. And then the, the SS building is right there. That's the SS building.